Welcome. I want to thank you all for joining us today. We're joined by uh, Mayor Hancock and Mayor Kaufman, uh, and I want to thank them, uh, um, two of our three largest cities uh, here in the Denver metro area, for their leadership in managing the crisis from a municipal level where really the most mixing occurs. Uh, people from suburban areas and exurban areas come into cities uh, well beyond their uh, population. Uh, they contribute to the overall economy of our state and the health situation of our state. We're also joined by Dr. Rachel Herlihy, the state's top epidemiologist. I want to thank her for her uh, important work. Uh, she will give you an update. Now, the modeling that Dr. Herlihy will provide shows the uptick that we've had, a uh, significant uptick over the last few days, and show uh, the fairly dire picture going forward if we don't change our actions and take, uh, take some changes that we're talking about today. Uh, including more mask wearing and social distancing that are so important. And while we're watching the trend every day, uh, and we hope that the additional precautions that Coloradans have hopefully taken in the last week or two uh, will be borne out in the data in the future, uh, this trend is alarming enough, uh, along with uh, additional data points about the efficacy of uh, mask wearing uh, that I'll be talking about later, that really justify that um, actions on behalf of protecting our economy and protecting the health of the people of our state. From day one, we've approached this crisis uh, and promised to be transparent We're, and show you how we make decisions, what the latest data is, regardless of whether news is good or bad. Uh, and I've said that we will always take the steps necessary to protect Coloradans, uh, protect our economy, and save lives. Uh, I am, of course, glad that while Colorado is not yet a hotspot, uh, the whole country is showing a significant uptick. And Colorado has not been an exception from that trend. Uh, and uh, we need to make sure that we take actions that prevent Colorado from uh, being an uptick situation. I, you know, there's, there's a lot of news that isn't, isn't fun today. It's really important that you all hear it. You hear the data. You hear the steps. You hear the importance of mass wearing. I do want to share one positive bit of information. Um, as you know, from the start, we set up an innovation response team. Our state has worked very hard to acquire personal protection equipment, masks, gloves, gowns on the international market, which has been extremely chaotic. I mean, literally... Uh, everybody has a buddy in Jersey. I have a buddy in Jersey. He happens to be a doctor. He went to undergrad with me. I had to call him to go check on some masks there. They didn't check out. We didn't buy them, thank goodness. But the state has been very successful in operating the international supply chains and acquiring PPE. Uh, so we want to get that PPE out, at least some of it, to support our school districts. And so today, uh, I wanted to make sure people knew that we have enough medical grade masks that we will be able to send some medical grade masks to school districts. Uh, we will be able to help school districts meet the needs of their teachers. We're going to be able to get uh, at least uh, one mask per week for teacher, one medical grade mask out, uh, even broader than teachers, all people who work in a school that face students, uh, librarian and clerk and, and, and everybody. So districts have a lot of work to do. They're working hard. Uh, the state wants to help them reach their goal. Uh, however, they run the school year. Some are delaying, some are having classrooms, some are online, some are hybrid. But uh, masks are an important part of that mix. You'll hear more about masks today. And the state will be a partner in helping school districts have the personal protection equipment that they need to keep staff and students safe in whatever environment that looks like. So uh, I want to thank our uh, state team and Pat Myers and a number of others who worked very hard to be able to get uh, enough medical grade masks that the state can help supply and help meet the needs of school districts. I know they're very hard at work uh, to keep their students and teachers safe. Without further delay, I'll turn it over to Dr. Herlihy. Thank you, Governor. Good afternoon. As we take a look at today's data, I want to, to focus not just on the number of cases that we're seeing here in Colorado or the fact that we're seeing an increase in the number of cases here in the state, but the fact that we're seeing an increase in the rate of cases we're seeing. So we're seeing growth in the rate of increase, so acceleration of our case numbers. This figure that is shown here shows you the number of cases that have occurred in Colorado by week 
and they are color coded here to show you a visualization of whether or not um, cases have increased or decreased from week to week. So the bars that you see in blue represent weeks in the state where we have seen a decrease in the number of cases occurring. The weeks that are shown with red bars represent the weeks where we have seen an increase in cases in the state. And also, if you see the dark red color, that corresponds to weeks where we've seen a greater increase in the rate of acceleration of this epidemic in the state. And so if you look at our last week of data in this figure, the week of July 5th, what you'll see is that the growth in our cases has increased. We've seen an acceleration from the last week in June through the first week of July. And we're concerned that this trend is going to continue in the state. Similarly, if you look at the next slide, this shows you hospitalization data. So each of these bars represents the number of hospitalizations that have occurred in Colorado per day. And each of the colorful lines represents a different level of growth rate. So if you look at the red line, that shows you the growth rate that we experienced um, during the stay at home period of time and early during safer at home. So what you can see by that red line is that we saw a steady decrease in hospitalizations. And if you follow that red line out, we would have continued to see a steady decline in hospitalizations in the state. If you look at the turquoise line, that shows you what we experienced in the state later during the safer at home period of time, where we saw a leveling out, sort of a plateau in the number of hospitalizations occurring. If you look at the orange line, that is where you start to see an increase in the number of hospitalizations in the state, an acceleration of the increase of hospitalizations. And so what I'm showing you today is the most recently fit model to our hospitalization that is showing some pretty rapid acceleration in the number of hospitalizations occurring in the state. So that orange line corresponds to a effective reproductive number, that R value we talk about of 1.78. Um, the previous values you can see were just above one and below one for previous periods in the epidemic. Next slide. So here we focus in on that reproductive number. And you can see that several weeks ago, our reproductive number was less than one. Two weeks ago, it was just above one. One week ago, it increased to around 1.3. And currently, we estimate that it is somewhere between 1.6 and 1.8. So we are continuing to see that reproductive number go up which again represents an acceleration in the number of cases occurring here in the state. And that is similarly shown in the graphic to the right. Next slide. These figures show you the modeling data representing the number of hospitalizations and ICU admissions that might be needed in the state under various scenarios. So our latest scenario based on the last few days of data is shown in that orange line. Previous slide. Thanks. Um, oops. Um, shown in the orange line. So if you look at that orange line, what you'll see is a rapid increase in the number of cases in the state that could occur over the next several days. And so when I talked previously about the growth rate being important, that's really what we're tracking here. So earlier, our predictions with this model had shown slower rates of increase in the number of hospitalizations and ICU beds needed in the state. Unfortunately, what we're seeing from the last few days of data is showing that our, we have the potential to exceed our ICU bed capacity in the state in early September, um, with a peak potentially occurring sometime in October. And so being on this path is certainly a place that we um, do not want to be right now. We are below the level of social distancing that we know is feasible to um, maintain the transmission of this virus. Next slide. So this figure is showing you another trend that we are seeing here in the state, and that is a change in the age distribution of our cases that are occurring. Um, as time has gone on, we've seen that a greater proportion of COVID-19 cases are occurring among those under the age of 40. And we also see a recent increase in the number of infections that are occurring in children, so those 0 to 19 years of age, with an emphasis of most of those infections occurring in older children and teens. Infections in older adults remain low relative to other age groups. Next slide. Similarly, um, age, adults age 40 plus are now comprising a greater proportion of hospitalized populations. We're seeing an increase in hospitalizations in middle-aged adults in the state. And unfortunately, just in the last few weeks, we're now also starting to see more hospitalizations in older adults once again. Additionally, 
we know that one of the concerns that we have here in the state is is the fact that we have individuals from across the state that are, are coming into Colorado and visiting from locations outside of Colorado where rates of transmission are higher. This graphic shows you some parts of the country where visitors are coming to Colorado, specifically in this figure is visits to Denver County. And so you can see that there is potential risk to Coloradans um, posed by visitors to our state who are coming from Texas, Arizona, Florida, and other states where rates of transmission are higher than they currently are in Colorado. So looking at the number of factors that might be driving this rapid increase in cases that we've observed in the last few days, there's probably several contributing factors. Um, we certainly know that social distancing levels have decreased, which means that there's increased contact rates among people in Colorado due to changes in behavior or policies. We know that there is probably increased out of household contact rates among younger populations. So younger individuals are probably starting to spread the virus to older populations. We know that those younger populations are probably mixing more um, outside of their home, resulting in transmission outside of the home. We know that there's the potential for importation of cases from outside of Colorado into the state and contact between visitors out of state with Colorado residents. There's also, of course, the possibility of random chance. Um, we know that you know, we're, we're looking at this data and it's based off of just several days worth of data, so we need to interpret it carefully and continue to watch the data over time. But given the trends that we're seeing, we don't believe that chance alone is explaining the findings that we're seeing currently. Thank you very much.